Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Airy, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado let's go. Today's first story. In this story, OP met their ex-girlfriend, and they were deeply in love, planning to move in together. However, the ex-girlfriend's ex, Ethan, started working at her company, causing problems in their relationship. She went on a work trip, stopped communicating, and eventually admitted to having an affair with Ethan. They broke up, and she got back together with Ethan and later married him. He struggled with trust issues but eventually moved on. Now let's get into the story. This was a tough one to deal with for a while, but time healed the wounds from it. Essentially, things felt like it was a happily ever after before she had to go away for a work trip and ended up with her ex. I will post the full story here too, because it's still good for me to get this off my chest even though a few years have passed now. So I met my ex-girlfriend at a bar one night when we were out with groups of our friends. She and I hit it right off and exchanged numbers. Before long, we were texting regularly, and became an item not long after that. I had dated a fair bit before her, but we really clicked. I actually had that feeling of the one for the first time ever. We had a ton in common, got along famously, had similar goals in life, and just really enjoyed each other's company. She had dated a fair bit before me too. When we got to the talks of exes, there was one that kept coming up. Let's call him Ethan. She talked about how she thought he was the one but he was addict to her, left her a couple of times, and wasn't very well liked by her family or friends. I could tell she had an infatuation with him, as she had mentioned moving on, but he would always weasel his way back in. She assured me, though, that he was gone for good and that she had long blocked him everywhere. That gave me a sigh of relief, but deep down I just had a feeling. Fast forward nine months. Things were going real well and we were looking at getting our first apartment together. We were zeroing in on a couple of places and were getting ready to make offers. I already had my own place and she was still with her parents but was practically living at my place at that point. We just wanted to get more space in a place that was truly ours. One day she came home from work and said the craziest thing happened. Remember my ex, Ethan? He got hired in the sales department of my company. My stomach dropped when I heard that she worked in the operations department of her company and I knew that they worked closely with sales for projects. She had started working there a few months prior and I would like to think it was completely by chance, but you never know. I asked her if this would be a problem. She said no, she would be avoiding him, but also felt that time had passed and that they could be professional together. I did not have a good feeling about it, but she assured me it would be no issue and that if there was, she would look to move. That was when things started to change. At first, it was small things. She wouldn't want to meet for lunch as often. I used to hear from her throughout the day and then it became an odd text here and there during the work days, but outside of work, everything was fine. We were still getting along. I didn't notice her more preoccupied with her phone. I never checked it or anything like that, and she was still coming and going at regular times. She just kept saying it was getting busy at work when I pressed about her not engaging as much during the day. Fair point. Then the big one came. She came home and told me that the company was flying her team alongside sales and marketing to their head office for a few days for specialized systems training. I asked if everyone on all teams were going and she said yes. Subconsciously, I knew right then that it was over. I was trying to play it cool, but inside I knew something might happen there. I still gave her the benefit of the doubt, but told her I was concerned about them being away together. She assured me nothing would come of it and that she had barely spoken with him. It would be fine. On the day of the trip, I drove her to the airport. It wasn't a long flight, but she texted me when she landed and we had a Skype call from her hotel room. She said she was going to dinner and for some drinks with the team later and that she would talk again before her day started. That was the last time I spoke with her for the entire trip. She texted me when she got to the restaurant. Then it was radio silence for three whole days. I texted her asking how it was going. Nothing. I tried calling and got her voicemail. I just said I wanted to see how it was going. Nothing. She texted me once after two days that she was fine and just swamped. 
that she was tired when she finished up and would call me before she left. She didn't. On the day of her return home, I texted her saying that if she wanted me to pick her up from the airport, she needed to let me know, otherwise, I wouldn't be there. I was so pissed at that point. I get things come up and you get busy, but I just felt like something was going on deep down. I never heard from her. I finally texted her that I was going to be at my place and that it would be nice to see her when she got back. I tried to keep calm but just knew that something was up. A few hours went by and then all of a sudden the door opened. She came in and started saying how much she missed me. I asked her how she got back from the airport. She said a friend drove me here. I asked if it was Ethan and she said maybe. At that point, I was enraged but still kept calm with her. I told her I thought something happened between them while she was gone and I wanted to know the truth. Right then. She kind of stared off blankly and then started crying. She said yes, it did. She said at first it was good intentions and she had no plans to see him, but that they got talking when the team was at the bar, and then one thing led to another and she was back in his hotel room with him. She then said they pretty much had six the entire time they were at the company head office, which is why I never heard from her. She tried to defend herself, saying that he was her one that got away and this provided her some closure. None of that made any sense to me. She then told me she got it out of her system and that it would not happen again. I told her that she was still working with the guy, so there was no way it was over. I told her it was over for us, though, and she had 24 hours to get her shit out of my place. She begged and pleaded to stay, but I wouldn't have it. She eventually left and within a month was officially dating her ex again. No surprise there. They actually seemed to make it work and got married not long after. Too good for them. Happy ending, I suppose. It messed with me for a long time and I had a hard time trusting people again. Eventually, I moved on too, and it was all for the best. Today's second story. In this story, OP's routine is disrupted when his wife starts coming home late from the laundromat, lies about it, and later admits to an affair with a veteran she met there. They have a heated argument, leading to their divorce. The wife briefly stays with the veteran but is eventually kicked out. She attempts to reconnect with her ex-husband but is rejected. Now let's get into the story. Every Thursday afternoon my wife took our clothes to the laundromat. I get home from work around 5 and she'd still be out because she slept in late and watched soap operas before going. But to her credit, she always had dinner ready and waiting for us. I usually waited till she got back to get myself a serving, but one night she still wasn't back by 6.30. That was awfully late. I texted and called her, but she didn't answer. She had a flip phone and had trouble paying attention to it. I just hoped she was okay. I finally ate a couple of bites, then decided to drive to the laundromat to help her out. I found her loading the clean clothes into the van. She was surprised to see me and started stammering. When I asked what gave her a late start today, she blushed and finally admitted she was reading a steamy romance. I laughed because she was behaving so shamefully around me when normally she would be so outgoing and dramatic about the books she read. She was very animated and sexual with me. But when she mentioned it this time, she was embarrassed and didn't want to talk about it. That made me wonder if she was thinking of someone else or if something else happened that day. When we got home, she didn't sit down with me to eat. She urged me to eat without her while she got a shower because she felt yucky. That was different too. It was pretty normal for me to sneak into the bathroom and give her a little start while she was showering just before I hopped in with her. So I decided I should take advantage of that and see how she reacted. She actually screamed. She was so freaked out. She was obviously on edge. I tried to shush her and calm her down, reaching out to take her in my arms, but she ignored me. And continued washing her private area. She said I scared the crap out of her and for that reason she was mad. I told her she seemed on edge and different before that. She climbed out of the shower to dry off and became exasperated with my insistence. She swore to me that she was fine and just felt worn out from cleaning. She was nearly snapping at me and it was so out of character for her that I stood there staring at her. She told me not to look at her like that and left the bathroom. I went into autopilot for the next few days while I observed my wife's behavior. She was as quiet and normal looking as possible. It was like she knew something that she wanted to tell me but couldn't. There weren't any celebrations coming up, and as far as I could tell, something was wrong. 
She took longer to get home again the next Thursday, but she said it was because she went to a different one. I asked why and she said it was because it was cleaner and newer. I accepted that for the time being, but when I drove by it the next day after work, it was super dumpy and gross. I couldn't believe my wife lied so blatantly about why she didn't go to the same laundromat. When I got home, we sat down for a quiet dinner and I asked her why she lied to me. She looked like a deer in headlights. She asked what I was talking about and I asked her if she had more than one lie going. She said she wasn't sure what I meant. I told her I drove by the laundromat and it wasn't cleaner or newer as she said. Just then her phone rang in the living room and I got up to get it. She jumped up too, but sat down when she realized I wasn't going to stop. It was an unprogrammed number. I answered it and it was some man. He hung up when he heard my voice. Before going back to the dining room, I looked at her texts and saw she had some back and forth messages with this number. He thanked her for her help and asked her if she'd be there again next Thursday. She said no and asked him to stop messaging her. He asked why and then called two seconds prior. A text apology and wrong number came through. My wife came to look at me and took her phone out of my hands. I told her she needed to tell. Me what happened right then? I wasn't waiting for another second to find out what happened that changed her. And made her start lying to me. She locked her phone and collapsed on. The couch, planting her face in her hands. She told me that she met a man at the laundromat last week. He was a veteran that just got back from serving a few days ago. He was looking for the touch of a woman since it had been a long time. He was pretty straightforward and my wife felt like she had to help him because he needed it. He was a hero and it was. Just like her steamy novels. I was furious. I knocked over a lamp and a huge fight ensued. I asked why and she said something, but my blood was boiling so bad I couldn't even listen to what she was saying. The neighbors actually knocked on our front door in the middle of it and when they saw my face, they were scared. They asked if we needed any help. Because they heard the commotion and I told them we were just addressing my wife's infidelity, but it would be fine once she left. She said she wasn't leaving until the courts told her she had to leave the house. The neighbors left quickly to let us continue our discussion. I ended up leaving because she was a stubborn cow. I rented a hotel room for a while, stayed with my cousin, then with a friend, all until the divorce was final and she was ordered to leave before it was official. My wife ignored me while living in her house and probably having the veteran over. After she was ordered to leave, she called me. I didn't answer, so she texted me, calling me a few names and asking me why I had to be like this and other nonsense. She was just bitter because she thought she was going to win. When I rejoined the dating game, word spread that we divorced because of her infidelity. Her family caught wind of it and asked me where she was living now. I didn't know, so it was a while before people found out she was staying with the veteran in his tiny, dark apartment. She went off the grid for a while, even from her family, and stayed with him until he kicked her out. He let his relative move in, and he told her brothers come first. Over a woman as the reason for kicking her out. Basically, he got some overdue woman fun until he was done playing house and moved on with his life. My ex tried reconnecting with me, then feeling ashamed for being so willing to share herself with him when she had a wonderful marriage with me. I told her I was over it and she wasn't my responsibility anymore. 